Pink Poodle Crafts, join the Poodle Pack. It's time to get creative and make you laugh. Make your own art today. Pink Poodle Crafts is the way. What a good boy. Hello. Hello, crafty friends. How are you guys doing today? Hopefully, you're having a good day. Hopefully, anyway. Um, today, I'm going to go over um, a quick little DIY that you can do um, to make your own embossing powders. I've taught, I think I've done this in the past, but in a different way, uh, I believe. I'm not sure, because um, there's a couple ways you can do it, but um, the fact that uh, well, Tim Holtz came out with those embossing glazes and I can show you how to kind of make an embossing glaze basically um, and you can make it in any color you want as long as you have some clear embossing powder. Um, so you can, there's several different types of embossing powders. There's the, what they call UD, which is ultra thick embossing enamel and the, um, people like to say UD, U-T-E-E. -E. Which is, if you ever hear people say UD, <laughs> they mean emboss the ultra thick embossing enamel. It's basically um, a very granule embossing powder, kind of like grains of sand. Um, so that's that kind. That's the very thick kind. That's not good for like detail, but it's good for like all over coverage. Um, I can give you an example. What do I do with it? Oh, there it is. Like something like this, if you were to cover an ATC or you know, an embellishment of some sort, you can use the UD because you can add a couple layers and it'll give you a nice kind of enamel finish or like a resin like finish. Um, and then you have the thinner embossing powder. Like for instance, I have this in a tub. It's the Wow uh, Gloss Superior Fine and it's clear. And this is more like compared to the other one, this one is more like really 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 fine sand you can't see the individual granules very well so that's a very fine embossing powder that would be more for detailed things but you can also use it for all over coverage it would just take a lot longer of a time to get up to this kind of shine with this kind you'd have to keep do you know, apply like many layers of it to get you know this kind of shine going whereas this you can do it two or three times and you've got like a nice coat over top this but with this you'd probably have to do it six or seven times to get like a real good thick coat um so those are the two types that we can use and now you want to use clear if you're doing a like glaze now i'm not I, I, whenever i do anything that's like a tim holtz diy or whatever i'm not trying to say you shouldn't go out and buy tim holtz stuff because if you like it definitely do it. The only reason I do what I do when I say, oh, I have a DIY alternative for that is because some of us don't have the money to have, you know, a big collection maybe of, you know, or maybe we do sometimes, but not all the time. And like, I'm definitely going to buy some of his embossing glazes for sure. But, you know, I might buy a couple key colors and then I just might make my own for the rest of them, if you know what I mean. Because this is exactly what they are. His glazes are just basically translucent colored embossing powder. So if you use clear, you don't want to use white because that's going to make it opaque. You can make a, you can make opaque colors to use as regular embossing powder to emboss your stamps or your whatever um, by using white. You can do the same method that we're doing here. Just use white embossing powder instead of clear and you'll get an opaque um embossing you know result whereas what we're doing today is more of a glaze and what i did here um there's no color on that on that background okay that background itself does not have any color on it it was just decoupaged with a um uh with a paper and then the only color I put on here was from the embossing powders that I made, which are like glazes. Obviously, you can see through them. That's what his do. So I just made some colors that I wanted that would look kind of vintagey, but then I made a, like a pink color to kind of throw in there a little bit. So that all that color in the background 
um, is not on the paper. Now I also had put gold flakes in there, which I'm going to show you in part two, because we're going to make recreate kind of this ATC so that you can make it yourself with your embossing powders that we're going to make today. So stay tuned for that as well. And we're also going to do um, like this kind of a cool kind of almost a faux leather background also with the embossing powders. He kind of, Tim Holtz kind of showed something like this in his one of his demos where he showed, you know, doing the crinkled paper and the embossing powder and all that. So this is kind of like a dupe of that sort of. It's kind of like a, a technique that he's done in the past. Um, so what you need is two things, technically three things. You need some embossing powder. Uh, you can use either or, doesn't matter. You'll just get a different type of look with one or the other. I'm gonna do one of each. And then you need um, alcohol inks. Um, the third thing you kinda need is a very, very fine mist of an alcohol with alcohol in there. This is like one of those little mister bottles. It has a very fine mist. I wouldn't wanna use this, which is also filled with alcohol because it's gonna spray and it's gonna be too much. You don't have to have this. You can just use an eyedropper. That's fine too. Um, just as long as you're careful of how much you're putting on. I mean, it's not really that big of a deal. It's going to evaporate. And that's the point of this is that the alcohol itself is going to evaporate and you're going to be left with embossing powder. Um, so when you choose whichever one you do, you're going to get yourself some of these little cups type of thing. These little, you know, like shot glass type of jello shot <laughs> cups <laughs> if anybody's ever had jello shots you're going to put the desired amount of embossing powder now you don't want to fill this all the way up because when we put the alcohol and the color on it and everything it's going to puff up a little bit because we're adding stuff to it so you know don't fill it any more than like you know a third to halfway i'm just doing it like maybe a third or a fourth full because it you know a little bit goes a long way so I'm just filling it up a little bit. That's on you how much you want to fill it up. And I'm, today I'm going to make like an orangey color. Because um, I've already made like, uh, I'm going to make one orange color and one like brown color. Maybe I'll do the brown color first. Um, so I have a couple. I have like a sepia, which is good. Now if you want it to be like a glaze, you don't want it, to, you don't want to oversaturate it um, with alcohol because, with the ink, because it's going to get too dark. But keep in mind, you know, that a little bit does go a long way. And when you first put it in and start mixing, you might think, oh boy, that's, you know, it's a lot. But once you start mixing it and everything, it's going to, it's going to disperse as you mix it. And it's not going to be as much as you think it is. Um, I've got like a little popsicle stick. You can use whatever you have to mix it. Um, but because this is dark and we want to keep it on the lighter side. Now, the other ones I made... What's cool about it is if you make it a little too dark and you're like, oh, I wish I would have made that a little lighter and not had it be so incredibly dark. And even though it might still be translucent, it might be a little dark and you want it to kind of look like, you know, it's, you know, you can still see the background. And maybe if you make it too dark, it might be a little, you know, might not be able to as much. Well, after it dries and everything and you test it, if you feel that it's too dark, just add some clear embossing powder to it. And you can either A, respray it with a little bit of alcohol to re to re-wet the alcohol that's on the other and reconstitute it, or just put some of this in and mix it in. Just plain. It may not gather the color off of it, but when you go to sprinkle it down and use it, it will disperse itself. I'll show you what I mean. We'll we'll do a little bit of that in, in a in, uh, probably in part two mostly, but um, so don't fret and don't think that, oh no, I ruined it. There's several things you can do. So to start off with, I'm going to take, actually, I'm going to take my mister. Now, the reason why it's got to be a mister is because we're going to spray this directly on here and you don't want it to go all over the place. If you don't have this, use a pipette, but only do like a tiny little bit at a time, just a few drops. And it's just to help move the alcohol ink a little quicker. Um, but I just take this and the mini mister will move it a little bit, but if you hold it far enough away, it'll be all right. And I'm putting a few drops because it does only, you know, give up a little bit and, it, you know, it's going to look kind of wet. And then just put a few, just put a few drops in like that and start mixing it up. 
Now, it, you know, you might think, oh, that looks dark in the spots that, that, that it, it's at, but it's going to definitely lighten up as we go here. So you're just going to keep mixing it, breaking up the little globs of ink. If it's too dry, you could spray it a little more. If you don't like spraying it, again, use a pipette or something. So now this is starting to look like the color it's going to look. I still have a couple of spots that are a little bit clumped together. You see what I mean about it puffing up because now it's almost halfway filled. Uh, it puffs up to almost double its size and it looks different when it's like that. Now it's got like an orangey tinge to it and I want it to be a little more brown and I don't think, I mean, that is a sepia color, so of course that was going to make it like a brown. I don't think I have a brown brown. I'm not sure. I have rust. And then I have black, so I may add a little black to it. What's this? What color is this? They don't put the colors on very easy to find. Oh, caramel. I could use some of that and see if that helps. Yeah, because I don't have like um Oh, here's teak wood. We can add some of that. What I'll do is I'll add a little more of that in. And I'll add like a drop of black. Just to kind of... Just one little drop and then we'll see what happens. And like I said, if it gets too dark, just add more embossing powder. And a, like a squirt of alcohol. which this might be a little too dark, but then again, it might look different when it's melted. You know what I mean? So you might want to wait. Like I'm okay with this because I don't mind adding a little clear embossing powder when I go to use it. Like it doesn't really bother me that much to have to use a little bit of clear embossing powder to kind of offset the color. You just have to find the sweet spot. And again, as far as recipe goes, you kind of got to do this and play and figure out what colors you like, you know. Um, you can go, you know, you can put in uh, a certain amount, like a certain amount of tablespoons or something. And then, you know, and then just count how many drops per how many tablespoons you put in and keep track of it for specific colors if that's what you want to do. Um... Now, you don't want to melt it or test it while it's like this because, I mean, you can, but it's going to take a little while to dry and it's going to bubble a little bit because, of course, it's got the alcohol in it. So the alcohol is going to have to burn off as you, as you, um, as you heat it. I can probably show you a demonstration of that because why not? Um, but it's probably best to wait till it's dry just because it won't take as long. And I'm going to heat it from underneath. I'm not going to heat it from on top. So I don't have to use any kind of uh, embossing ink or anything. Because I'm just going to put some on here like this. And just kind of do like that. And then I'm going to take my heat gun. And I'm going to heat it from the underside. And watch it melt. And let it get heated up a little bit. And maybe you'll get to see the bubbling that'll happen from the alcohol kind of like evaporating off of it. That's why it's taking a little bit longer and it might burn your paper a little bit. Oh, it's not really, well, it's bubbling a very little bit. Plus you can see it. See the bubbles? Now you can go on this side. It'll quickly melt off the alcohol and it'll kind of mix. See how it went from like a brown to like a green? Isn't that weird? It doesn't look anything like that. See what I mean? It's very odd. It's very odd. So you got to play and figure out what you like and what you don't like. I actually like that color, but it's very green. It doesn't look like that should have come from that. <laughs> it's so weird. But it gives a really cool kind of glaze color. And if you want it to be lighter, obviously, like I said, add more embossing powder. Um, like maybe I'll lighten it up just a little bit and all I have to do to do that while it's still wet is just to add in some more embossing powder and if I need to a little bit of alcohol but this should be alright it should be 
still damp enough to pick up some color. And if you see it's got speckles in it like that where you can see the clear after you've mixed it a few minutes and you don't want that, then you may have to add a little bit of alcohol. Just a spray or two to get it to deposit enough of the color on the clear that you just put in. And I'll do that. I'm going to hold it up a little bit. Mush it around a little bit and then a little bit more because that's like a really really fine mist so it's not making it soapy sopping wet because all embossing powder is is basically granuled plastic that's what embossing powder is it's small little plastic tiny little plastic bits so it's non-porous, you know what I mean? Um, pretty much. I mean, it's it's holding on to moisture just for the simple fact that it's the moisture is encasing around it, which is fluffing it up. But it's not really absorbing necessarily a lot of moisture because it's still you know plastic little granules. Now I'm okay with that, even though it's not completely const like constituted and colored it doesn't matter because once you put it down it's not really gonna make a difference so what you're gonna do in that case is when you're done playing with it and you're you know you like the color of it just put it aside to dry and it might take a few hours to dry because you want you know you do want the alcohol to to uh, you know uh, evaporate which is what will happen so give it some time you know set it aside overnight do it before you go to bed something like that um, now when using the super fine stuff, the stuff that's like powder, that you're going to be a little bit more careful with how much liquid you put on there. And I'll show you why in a minute. But you're going to put your embossing powder in. Now, this you might not want to spray it um, with a spray at all. I mean, you still can as long as you do it from like a really high up like that which is still fine. You could do that if you don't mind the smell of alcohol. <laughs> and what I'm gonna do is add a couple of drops of the orange. What you don't wanna do with the super fine is get it too wet. You don't wanna keep adding color and keep adding color and keep adding color. And yes, you can mix a couple different colors together to get a desired color. Um, but you, it's, and it's also harder to mix because the alcohol is gonna ball up into these little, it's kind of going to act like a cat litter box, kind of like the, the scoopable cat litter. I know it's gross, but it's going to clump and you're going to take it and you're going to push it against the wall of the container and then mix a little bit and then push it against the wall of the container and just make sure that you kind of mix the color, you know, push it against the wall. You'll see it kind of break and the color will go onto the wall of the container and then just scoop it around and just keep doing that. It's a little harder to mix the fine stuff. And the thing with the fine embossing powder is this actually can, because it's more of a powder and it's less of a granule, it can absorb more of the liquid because, or seem to absorb more of the liquid. It won't break down necessarily, um, but it will clump together when it dries. And I'll show you one that I did, which is still fine. It's usable. It's just a little bit more of a pain in the butt. So what you want to do is you want to, you don't want to use a lot of embossing powder when you're making the fine, uh, using the fine, not a lot of embossing powder, a lot of ink and alcohol. You want to do it, you know, you want to be a little bit on the conservative side when you're adding your alcohol and your, and your inks and your color. And it, you know, because you don't want to over put too much on because you're going to end up with literally, it'll be like an embossing powder mud is what it'll do. And if it starts doing that and acting like a paste, then you're, you, you've got too much on there and it could cause a problem when it's drying, it's going to clump. And then when you go to, um, I keep kicking it out of the thing. When you go to actually like use it, it's, you're going to have to like break it up a lot. Um, which is not going to be easy to do. 
I keep knocking it all over the place. I'm like making more of a mess. Like right now, I don't feel that that's colored quite enough. And I don't know if I got every glob. You really have to watch for like the color globs that form and push them against the side and, and really incorporate them in. Just scoop through when you see one of those little color blobs. It seems that the this super fine embossing powder is a little bit harder to to work with than the UD, the ultra thick embossing powder, which is what we used the first time. So I'm gonna do a little bit more. I'm gonna mist it a little bit and put a little bit more color. hope that I can get without making it too pasty. And you can see the color is concentrating as I mash up those little little color blobs this one here you can see how concentrated it is as you mash up the little blobs and then scrape it off the side down into the but the the super fine does take a little bit more time than the the, the larger granules do you literally have to break up like every little little granule blob you see in order for the color to spread And I could probably add a few more drops of color, but that's just to give you an idea. And we could test this out too. It's gonna be a bit lighter probably than the other one. And again, oh, here's a granule that it's got a color in it. Okay, let's try that again. I flicked the card by accident. Didn't mean to do that. I have made quite the mess. Right. So it got darker, if you noticed, as it dried. So it's a nice glaze color. I like the orange on that. That's actually real nice. So it's going to look lighter in here, but actually turn out much darker and richer on the paper. But it gives a nice glaze. And it could be a little bit like, it can have like some striations of color in it a little bit. It's not like perfectly smooth. And I kind of like that, that it's got a little bit of that variant of color. I'm not sure if you'll be able to see it. Hey, see it? And I kind of like that. And, you know, if you heat it on top and, like, kind of let it, you know, go around, it'll, uh, 
it'll kind of blend itself. But I kind of like that look. Um, I think that kind of looks cool. But anyway, so that's how you make a basic um, glaze type of embossing powder. And like I said, you can make it as, you know, dark as you want. It'll always be have some sort of opacity to it. I mean, uh, translucency to it. Um, but you can always make it more translucent by just adding some straight um, clear embossing powder to the mix that you made. So you can make all different colors. Uh, I made several colors and I want to show you what happens when you add too much liquid to the thin embossing powder and how it can, how it kind of acts when it's, when it's dry. Let me get some of this mess that I got here cleaned up. So I've got some colors that I made here and this one here that is what happens and it it doesn't crumble as as well as i would have hoped it would but i did get it to crumble to about that which is about i mean if i if i got my mortar mortal and pester is that what it's called i can't remember the name of it i have one of those and if i would have gotten that out which this doesn't want to focus on that if i would have gotten that out i could have gotten it down further um but yeah, it's like a rock. <laughs> but if you're just using it for glazing purposes, um, you know what I mean? Like that's pretty fine, you know, that'll work. But then I also have another one, which is this one, that's the fine, and it's pretty much back to a powder consistency. So, and that's what this will be, you know, because I didn't put too much on. So that, that when it's dry, just break up a few little clumps with a, with a stick you know, just break up a few of the little clumps that'll be left and it'll go back to a complete powder. And then I have some others that are, this is the, uh, the UD, the ultra thick embossing enamel, which just needs a little breaking up here and there by pushing against the sides a little bit, but it's pretty well, you know, good to go. And then here's a like light brown color which is also UD. Looks a little green on camera, but it's not. And then here's a red, and this was done with the UD as well. It's like, this is actually that pink color that's on that thing uh, on the ATC. I used this color and it came out, it's, it looks kind of reddish there, but it came out kind of pink looking on there. It's real pretty. So you could play around with it, and, and that's what I mean, like the colors, you know, I don't know what colors you'll get. It depends on what alcohol inks you have. Um, it depends on, you know, what you're going for. And I would just play and, you know, you can make some, a ton of different colors. And if you have little containers, like little um, lidded containers, which I have lids for these containers. I have lids that go on these. I don't have lids for these ones. These were those little, like, those little medicine ones that they give you at the hospital kind of thing where they put, like, your medicine in it. And that's what these kind are. So you could play around and figure out what colors you want to make. And again, this one here is very opaque because I was experimenting, of course. This one is extremely opaque. That's how much embossing powder I put in that I might as well have started with white because it's like opaque. Um, obviously, I could thin it down with... Oh, here's the thing I made, the swatch. Look, look how opaque that is. So you can make an, you know, an opaque embossing um powder but it's not really going to be a, a powder i mean if you use your mortar and pester and really work it it would be but um that's the brown color there that's the the this color here this golden color which is really pretty that's the pinky color there it's like a cranberry color and that is this color here oh wait wait yeah this one is this color here this one is that color there it's kind of like a, a, a muted kind of sage green but it's interesting and you can add you know colors into it which is what i did for this i had put down um some clear and some of these other colors i was sitting here dropping them like i would heat the embossing powder and then i would drop the colors onto it you know what I mean? And then heat it again and color and add more color to it, which I'll show you in the next video. Um, but yeah, it's really fun and it's easy to do. And it's something that most all of us can do because we most likely have some of this UD or some sort of 
clear embossing powder and we also probably have alcohol ink so it's a pretty easy thing to do um, I know people are gonna probably say well what else can I use can I use this can I use you know uh, food coloring can I use I don't know you, you probably I don't know if you can or not you might be able to I'm not sure how well it'll take the color that's for you to discover and then you tell me <laughs> you tell me if that works for you um, I've colored embossing powder in the past with alcohol ink um, and I've also colored uh, embossing powder with other embossing powder so I can take like or with glitter um, if you take like some if you want to make like a clear glitter embossing powder you can just take some embossing powder and add like some glitter um, but you want to add like probably about no more than a little bit less than half and half so in other words half glitter half embossing powder like one part to one part that's usually slightly too much so you might want to do like two parts embossing powder one part glitter it usually will incorporate a little better and you won't have any kind of you know glitter flaking off um, but you could do that you can add other colors to make like the colors lighter so if you have a color and you want it to be more translucent you could take a little bit of that color whatever the color is and add it to a little cup and then add some clear with it and just mix it the way it is and then use it and the I mean it, it depending on how much you use you may have to let the heat gun mix it really well but you know if you like kind of a speckled look you can get that speckled look that way you can also get a speckled look if you add take any one of these and add some of the UD in the white it's like the ultra thick embossing enamel that's in the white and you can add that and you'll get a cool speckled look which is really neat too so there's a lot of things you could do so you should experiment with that because it's a lot of fun and easy and yeah a good way to make um some more stuff for your stash uh you know if in case you can't afford to get the tim holtz embossing enamels but you were curious about you know what you could do with them you can start off by making a couple of your own to see if it's something that's worth it to you before you decide to buy any of his and you know play around with it and see what you get so I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. I'd really appreciate it. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Um, I do all kinds of different things, whether it's live streams and videos. Uh, I also have a live auction coming up on Sunday. That's this Sunday. Uh, I think that's the 2nd of February, and it'll be at 4.30 p.m. Central Time. I have, like, craft supplies, and I have all kinds of interesting things that I get um, that you can use for altering or whatever. I get books, and I get... I put together kits, so I'll have junk journal kits and all kinds of different things. So you might not want to miss that because it's a lot of fun. And I give away prizes pretty much every hour on the hour. Even if you're not buying anything, you can still come and win a prize. So there's that. And then I also have a Patreon. So if you're interested in supporting my channel and in return getting classes and special live streams that are just for my Patreon members and um, things of that nature, then check my links in my description below you will see my Patreon link. You can check that out because my Patreon starts at $1 a month and it goes up from there. So there's all kinds of different tiers you can join and it supports me and helps me do what I do and you get stuff in return for that as well. So I hope you guys have a great rest of your day and give this a try and let me know in the, in the comments below if you've ever made your own embossing powder and like what you've used to make your own embossing powder and if you think that you would find some use in making some of these glaze type embossing powders, let me know in the comments. I'd love to know what you guys, you know, what, what type of things you guys do with embossing powder. Um, and stay tuned for part two. That'll be up um, hopefully in the next day or so uh, so that this way you can see how I made this cool ATC using my glazes that I made. So yeah, I hope you have a good day and I will talk to you soon. Make sure you do what you love and love what you do. Poodle pack out. Bye.